webinar series and uh, this is really an honor to have with us someone like justice joseph this is korean joseph ms ganchan pam pamnini sorry pammani uh, mr amar jain and uh, professor rk choudhury we we are launching our webinar series here on uh, lawyers with disabilities and uh, i'm thankful to rosico and its co-founder and ceo mr ramanuj mukherjee for asking me to host the series uh, now ramanuj had posted something very interesting on linkedin he said that he would like me to host because he wants to learn more on this and he thinks that he does not know enough on the subject now this is interesting because sometimes we think we know about a subject and that kind of restricts our ability to understand it further so i thought let me moderate the session from a place where i would believe that i don't know the wide range of issues accessibility issues that people with disabilities have and the wide range of experiences that people with the same disability or different disabilities may have so i would request you all to approach it from the same perspective and to listen to anyone's experience with an open mind and uh, for a lack of better word uh, try to be non judgmental because uh, they are all their own experiences just like you may have your own so uh with this i would like to start a session we have a, a, a sign language interpreter with us nataraj so we we'll request our speakers to go a bit slow because uh, then it would facilitate interpretation um also we respect the access needs that people may have so if any of you have any other access needs that are not being met please do get in touch with us we'll put an email id in the inbox so that you can contact us on that if you have any other access needs if at any point you feel uncomfortable or you want to leave the session you are getting overwhelmed you can do that you can come back again we are also live on youtube the youtube video will be available for later use as well so you can always watch it later now with that we this is a bit about the logistics now a little bit about how this webinar series came into existence now uh facing a disability myself it gave me an access to know the specific needs that people with disabilities may have and it also gave me an uh, a perspective that i soon realized was shared by people with disabilities other people with disabilities as well so with that in mind when i joined the legal profession 2014 i would often wonder how anybody on a wheelchair would make it through the corridors crowded corridors of the supreme court every day we have when you think of accessibility sometimes what comes to mind i know there are people working in the sector who are with us who, there are people with specific needs with us but sometimes with people what happens what comes to mind are only ramps but there's so many types of disabilities with so many different needs that people may have that one wonders that there may be students out there who would not even think of studying law because they think that their needs are not going to be met in the system so it's like asking a woman to either become a teacher or become a nurse or you sit at home and you can do anything from home so we are living it in that age when it comes to people with disabilities so what is it what is it that we can do about under representation of lawyers with disabilities and how do you make it possible for students to choose to dream of making it in the legal profession and how do you make it easier or how do you ensure full participation 
full and effective participation of lawyers with disabilities? Are they really different questions or are they one? So this is the broad theme of this webinar series. And uh, today we are going to deal with a broad overview of, on the subject with Ms. Kanchan Pamnani uh, as, the, as our first speaker. She has a, she holds a postgraduate degree in law from Bombay University besides uh, being a graduate in, in commerce. She has also got, she has also done courses from WIPO and she's also, uh, you know, qualified to practice as a solicitor in uh, England and Wales. She's a very establishing practicing lawyer right now and, and solicitor in Bombay High Court. She deals with corporate cases, testamentary cases, disability law cases. So, so let's hear from her what her journey has been and what it takes to be Kanchan Pamnani. Over to you, ma'am. Please begin whenever you're ready. Hi, I'm not being able to unmute her, actually. Hello, ma'am? Yes, ma'am, no? Yeah, I'm not actually being able to unmute her. It's okay. Just give her some time. She, she... Yeah. Did you go for Luna? Can I hear you? You are already unmuted. Please, please uh, continue to talk. We can hear you. I would request the participants to please be on mute. Thank you. Thank you so much. Kanjin, are you with us? Yeah, hi. I can see her, but uh, there is some issue with her audio, I guess. I see. Because uh, we can we can start with Amar, sir, if you want. Sure, let's do that. Let's do that. So Amar is an advocate and he's also a, an accessibility professional. He holds a, he's also a certified web accessibility professional and he's he's a lawyer who works in the corporate sector. He has been working there for over six years now. And uh, he would share with us his experiences of being in corporate sector and the issues that he faces as a as a as a lawyer with a disability in the corporate sector, as well as how these issues can be resolved. Over to you, Amar. If you can also talk a bit about the work you do with the disability in the disability sector as well, along with pointing the issues that we have. In Oh, so, <clears throat> sure. Thanks, Sanchata. And uh, I, I'm, I'm clearly audible, right? Yes, you are. Thank you. So thank you, uh, first of all, uh, Law Seco team for doing this. It's it's a much needed initiative uh, for sensitization. Uh, let me briefly tell you about how I started and, and, and how it, it really started, how the journey started. I come from a Hindi medium blind school based out of Jodhpur, Rajasthan. I did my schooling from there and being brought up in a setup like Rajasthan uh, where, you know, sort of we still think traditionally people thought that the only career meant for me was either teaching or music industry. And I didn't want to do either of them. I wanted to do something different. So finally, I mean, after facing a lot of resistance from people, uh, from, from, from friends, relatives and all of that, uh, decided to sort of uh, do law 
and came to Bombay, did my law from GLC, Government Law College, Mumbai. And then I started working with law firms. I'm, I'm still working with the law firm and I have worked in the areas of capital markets and banking and finance, respectively. I'm right now in capital markets. So back in 2013, when I joined this profession, uh, it, it wasn't, uh, I mean, known to people that even people with blindness can become a transactional lawyer. Uh, because, uh, of course, well, well uh, one fact was that there were not too many people who were practicing uh, in, in corporate sector as such. There were lawyers. There are, of course, lawyers uh, who continue to do this litigation. But uh, nobody was doing transactional lawyering per se. So I think the real challenge, if I may talk about, uh, was firstly seeing an, an environment which can accommodate you, uh, that, that uh, we talk of reasonable accommodations, accessibility, and, and and then the challenge was of accessibility and availability of the I remember when I joined uh, in 2013, Technology wasn't there where you could even deal with, uh, let's say, a prospectus, which could be anywhere between 500 to 700 pages or even more than that. Scratch, uh, uh, and it was difficult to form back then. But in last six, uh, sorry, I think my internet connection is slightly unstable. My apologies for that. In last six to seven years, technology really changed the way uh, even people with uh, blindness or people with other disabilities can become uh, lawyers. Today, I can confidently say that, you know, even dealing with 30,000 pages document is not difficult if, if you have the latest technology available with you. So for a person with any disability, and especially for a pers person with blindness, what is really needed is access to the latest technology. So your IT and procurement team has to really... Uh, be, uh, be sort of up for buying the latest softwares and deploying latest softwares because mostly what happens in, in, in a setup like this is that uh, firms deploy. So if you, you your, your new minus one is the norm in IT industry. So you don't deploy the latest upgrade. Now that is a problem for a person with disability because what happens is assistive technology. So we use a software which reads out what gets displayed on screen, which is called a screen reader. So when you try to use that software, uh, it is because it's an assistive technology, it provides you access to existing technology through making its own adjustments. So it's always compatible with the latest technology. So that's very important. The second thing which is important is that how do you ensure the kind of work which is doable for persons with disabilities? For example, for me, initially due diligence was a big challenge, which still remains a challenge because if you give a data room access where we are doing due diligence and you haven't given even the uh, rights to perform OCR, which is your optical character recognition, then I can't really read that document. I The only way I have to deal with it is to print the document and rescan again. So that's a problem. So when, when we, to pre preserve confidentiality, when we sort of protect the documents, for example, so uh, that becomes a problem. So complete protected documents. So accessibility remains a big, big sort of concern. Uh, accessibility, you can talk of accessibility of uh, filing portals like MCA 21, uh, your income tax website, or a couple of others where accessibility continues to be a big challenge. Even uh, regulatory authorities, the regulations and, and all of those circulars, notifications which are being passed, the databases, SCC online, for example, till date remains inaccessible. So that is one key concern. The second thing which is also important is your, uh, you, how do you measure performance metrics of persons with disability? Because in, 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 in a setup like this, your billable hours are more, the most critical thing, right? So when you are dealing with that concept and then when you're assessing person with disability uh, and, and then when we require reasonable accommodation of say time factor to convert the relevant material for, for, for us to be able to read that impacts the billable art. So how do you me measure that? That's that's the second thing which we need to think upon. Uh, third thing is, uh, there is a need of sensitization. There is a greater need of sensitization. Uh, what type of works should be assigned? How timelines should be assigned? All of those factors also affect. But in all, I can definitely say that 
today uh, as things are becoming machine readable and as things are becoming you know you will go driving towards e filing virtual hearings for example in litigation sector in in law firm we already or law firms or corporate uh, setups we already deal with sort of uh, virtual sort of transaction hard i mean barring buying uh, your uh, kick off and maybe few drafting sessions everything is virtual so people with disabilities can really become a great performers if we have the right sort of infrastructure and access to latest technology as well as uh, sort of uh, right awareness as to what kind of uh, how do you deal uh, with with sort of work assignment and and timelines and everything uh, it's definitely doable so yeah i think uh, with that i would give it back to sanjita thank you so much amal thank you amal we have kanchan with us so kanchan would you like to go can you hear me now yes okay um can i switch off my video for a bit or uh, sure you think is it possible if i do that yes you can do that uh, can we switch off kanchan's video please no just one second just one second just okay. one second No, just one second. Let me just see if I can do this. Sure. Okay. All right. Okay. Um. I, okay. That's fine. Um. So okay, I was telling you a little bit about my life and how I started, and therefore the experiences and the challenges that I have faced. A lot of what Amar said is of course true, and uh, we have to look at that. But I'll tell you my story a little differently. Um. And I'm uh, like one generation uh, older than Amar, so I will tell you the problems that I have faced. um and i started with a culture of paper paper and many many drafts many uh, copies of many drafts so uh, when i was young i was low vision and we never measured the percentage because there was nothing like that at that time so i went to school with thick glasses with a plus 11 number i sat in class the front of the class and uh, try to see the um, blackboard as well as my neighbors uh, papers so that i could write my homework my class work but i managed because i could hear my teacher clearly i paid attention and my other senses were heightened at that time as well went to school always wanting to be a lawyer my dad was a lawyer i always wanted to be one he wasn't keen at all that i was a lawyer because he said you have you know books with small print and with person with such bad vision how are you going to read there was no question of technology in those days not the technology that we know today so there i was went through my graduation in commerce and again thinking what am i going to do with myself i decided i'll try all the exams the mba entrance exams the gmat the gre the tofel everything i wanted to do then maybe i'll do my uh, 16th year and go abroad but life had its own um, decision making so there i was uh, after my bcom year only eligible to go for law because all my uh, other uh, fees had lapsed and i couldn't do anything else and i had to join law and i was thrilled I was actually thrilled to be in a law college my handwriting was awful i could barely read because i had retinal detachments by that time so i could re read but i couldn't read very much but i managed i attended lectures regularly sat at the back of the class paid attention to my professors and learned my work um my colleagues my friends who were in class with me some of them have become uh, better lawyers than me some are not as good as me so i'm somewhere in the middle of the class my vision hasn't hampered me in that sense i went worked for a law firm a middle sized but a litigating law firm i learned a lot of litigation at that time what was difficult was if you were in court you got a paper at the last moment and i had to give it across the bar and then suddenly reading it and the same problem persists even today the biggest litigant the government they serve you an affidavit in court in the high court forget about the smaller courts and i have a major problem there but other than that when you get your documents and a lot of them come on email now earlier they used to come in hard copy but technology is there to read your documents for you there's no secrecy breached there's nothing on privacy that i have done wrong i can read them i do not need anybody to read them for me however 
a lot of lawyers do ask their assistants and juniors to read. So what's the harm if I had asked mine? But no, there's no requirement. You can do it yourself. Drafting, no difficulty whatsoever. Your, uh, as long as your language is clear, your thoughts are in place, and your knowledge is there. You can draft any document you need to draw. You can amend them. You can do track changes. Yes, it does get complicated by the fourth or fifth change. I will have a problem there. But other than that, it's fine. I can do it. Even when there are lots of changes, you can clean up the draft and read the whole thing and you know where the changes are actually. Research has become a lot easier. It's online, but a lot of websites are not accessible. So they're not properly uh, designed. They don't follow the international standards and we do suffer for them. Courts have become more accessible in the sense, physical accessibility. There are ramps now to enter the courts, not in all of them, but some of them. Of course, there are places where you'll go on a ramp and then you'll end up against a wall. There's nothing there. That's how even courts do not think about design. But uh, in any way, you can go to court. There's no difficulty there. What bothers me is I have an office which is 15 minutes walking from the High Court of Bombay. The roads are broken completely. And I love high heel shoes. So there I go tap, tap, tap with my high heels. But I have to be very careful that I don't go into one of the holes there. When you go through security, the security is so narrow. Um, I don't know how anybody gets through them. And if there's a fire in any of these courts, God help anybody to get out. But well, that's security and there are wires and things hanging around all the place, at all places. There are dogs sitting around the high court also, uh, anywhere and everywhere. Cats are basking in the sun on the ramp that leads you out of the security. These are problems that I face and others face too. Just because I'm blind doesn't mean I'm facing more than anybody else. But you have also have to go past a cat. That's, that's how, sorry. Anyway, but uh, those are the issues. When you go to the courtroom, um, there are people just standing around. They won't give way. And that's something, uh, well, that's male dominated India. Uh, they won't give way to a woman. They will just stand there in court. Whether it's a senior lawyer who thinks it's his birthright to be in the middle of the courtroom or a, a, a clerk. But to give, edge your way to the front of the court is difficult. Uh, Bombay High Court has removed uh, some steps. Some of the courtrooms were designed, um, they were not originally designed, but later on they had these steps. So you enter the courtroom, then you would have a little space and then three, four uh, steps and then you were on a stage and then you address the judge was a little higher than that. So a lot of courtrooms have uh, been recently redesigned. These steps are no more there. The stage is no more there. You're on flat ground and there are ramps leading into the courtroom. So things have become better. We are seeing changes. I have seen them and lived them. Uh, the original ramp at the Bombay High Court was so difficult to go up. And I always thought I'm gonna have a second disability because it was so difficult to go up and down. But now things are changing. And um, only thing is that it doesn't, it's not consistent. The steps, there's a riser and there's a step. If you look at the risers that have been created recently, they're all uneven. I don't know whether the public works department doesn't know that you know they have to be even steps or not. And nobody at the high court will check. Um, the lower courts, the magistrates court, etc., they're a little more difficult, I would say, because people give their applications in handwriting. So yes, I have technology that will read the handwriting even today, but it's going to be create a flutter in the courtroom. If I switch up my mobile phone and, and start reading the handwritten draft, I would have a problem. But it will be there. Sooner or later, uh, these are going to change. And in the new world, the e-court systems, the e-filings, and the web um, discussions and hearings are going to be very interesting. I don't know how far they're going to be accessible. We're looking forward to Justice Chandrachud's ideas. We've heard him say that there's a lot for the visually impaired and we're not going to be left out this time. There is the mindset of acceptance. Can a lawyer do it? Yes, why not? It's difficult to network. How do you get your clients? Because you can't, um, it's very difficult to go to a bar party or to a solicitor's uh, dinner because you have to have friends, you have to have a chamber and like I have my own practice. So it's very difficult to be there. But well, if you have to go, you have to go. 
and you make it there. Otherwise, it would be, I can't catch somebody's eye and say, hello, how are you? I'm Kanchan. But that happens. How do you get your clients? Clients come through a word of mouth. If you've done good with one matter, they refer to you, to their other friends, their, their families, their corporate clients, etc. So you get your work. I've had a great experience with senior management, but I've had not so good experience with lower management. I can tell you a couple of stories here. Uh, one was where um, I have a corporate client where they sent one of their clerks. The clerk wanted to set up some NGO. And uh, this was when I could see some. He came to my office and he sat and discussed his matter, but he wouldn't go beyond a point, five minutes of discussion. He just left it there. The next discussion was only about my eyes. How do you manage? How will you do it? I don't think you can manage. And I'm like, no, go away. If you don't think I can manage, you're wasting my time. Anyway, it was a free matter. You don't want to, you want me to do it, forget about it. But this is not what the senior management feels because they thought I was competent enough for them to send somebody to get some work done. And they still continue to be my client 20 years later. But this is what happens. I've had this other experience where I've been in a boardroom with the chairman of a company. And uh, after the board meeting, I've been left at the end of the room all alone to make my way out of the room, which is unfamiliar to me. And uh, everybody's just gone. Suddenly the chairman finds me there and he sees me walking out. He says, wait, where, where are you going? One second, hold on. And then he says, okay, hold on a minute. I'll take you home. And when I go down and he's putting me in his car, all the junior management shows up to open the door for me. So that's how it is. There are experiences where people have to have tried to cut my fees because I have a visual impairment and I don't appreciate that one bit. And I'd love to meet them now in life and say, well, you did wrong at that time. As far as clients go, if you are competent, you know your work, you will get your clients. And I have my own practice for the last 20 years now. And I'm quite happy with what I've done. I appear in court. I loved litigation. There was a time when I was switching away from litigation because I was losing sight. When I had some sight, it was very difficult in court because the judges didn't understand. I could barely see them. So they would uh, indicate by hand and I couldn't understand the indication. So I would continue arguing. But over time, when I lost sight, I first got frightened because I couldn't do it when I had low vision. And then I thought, oh my God, I can't do it now when I have no vision. But what happened was ultimately I'm destined for litigation. So I went back to litigation and now the courts have accepted. They got used to the fact that I can't see and they will adjust. I don't ask for much adjustment. I do my work. I learn my work and go. And I can tell them page 25, in parallel this, line that, but I cannot read that line for them. The day I'm allowed to take my laptop to court, the day I can put my software on and read that sentence to them, well, we good. That will happen sooner or later. But at this point, it doesn't exist. I don't think I have done badly for my clients. I think I've done okay. I've been hard working. And the other problem that comes up is when you're looking at departmental work, when you have to clear objections, etc., which the department raises, all these are raised by hand. They're all handwritten. Okay, so you ask for help, you ask your secretary to go with you and you ask her to read the objection and you sort of sort it out there and then, and you initial on the sides and wherever you have to. So overall, I don't think there was any issue about my practice. I do not find that even the Supreme Court is very difficult, except that it's inaccessible. They've got steps somewhere, they've got a very, very narrow entrance to each courtroom as if, you know, there are every one of us is carrying a, a gun to shoot the judge. I'm not interested in doing that. I want to get in safely. I don't want to hurt my arms and uh, my elbows, especially. Uh, carrying books. Well, it's very difficult because you carry, you have a gown, you have a jacket, you have uh, your books in hand and you've got a stick in hand or you're trying to hold on to somebody. It's a little difficult. But then I guess I'm senior now to give it to my juniors and say, please carry it in for me. But, uh, other than that, it's been tough um, in, on that front. As a woman lawyer, I've not had it so bad because I worked for a very senior lawyer initially and uh, I could go to the court uh, only when I really needed to be in the court. So I didn't uh, get abused or uh, I heard the sexist jokes that were cracked. They're much less now. But uh, yes, in the old days, the men were really. But um, today also, you don't find too many senior women lawyers, unfortunately. They're not arguing in court. A lot of senior solicitors, women who are really doing great draft, drafting work and are sitting at office.
but very few in court arguing matters fully. Yes, adjournments, you have a lot of junior women lawyers, but not so many senior. As far as the men, they want to touch, not everybody. And you have to be very careful and uh, as a woman yourself, and you have to make it a point to make an objection. Otherwise, they just, even if you just forget to do it or you uh, let it slip, um, everyone just takes advantage unnecessarily and there's no need for that kind of advantage, but uh, it happens. Otherwise, work has been great. And uh, I would suggest to anybody who thinks that they can't do it, no, you can. Everybody can be a good lawyer and you have different, different fields and you'll find your field to be there. Yes, I would have a problem in recognizing two trademarks, whether they infringe or whether they uh, they passed off. But I know the theory of in trademark law and I know uh, where I can access. You know, what are the questions I have to ask somebody to tell me the answer so that I can fight that case? There are some other things that I may not be able to do, but 99% of the matters I think I can handle. I think even cases like um, warrants and summonses and... Uh, uh, you know, people who have to go to jail, etc. Those are most of them are on paper. The information is there. The details are there. You can you can hear the evidence of the uh, police inspector who's giving his view version of it. You can hear other things as well. For those who cannot hear, there's a lot of material that is available in writing, and you can perceive more than anything else. There are other senses that work. I don't have a sixth sense. But I definitely, my other senses are heightened enough to pick up, to not let the profession down. Thank you, sir. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Thank yeah. you, Kanchan Ma'am, for yeah. such an amazing uh, speech on and the way you shared your journey with us. Thank you. Uh, there are some wonderful comments in the chat box that I'll read out to you later. Uh, let me introduce our next speaker to you all, Justice Corinne Joseph. My boss says, a justice never retires. A justice is always a justice. So, Justice Kurian Joseph needs no introduction. He's a former judge of the Supreme Court of India. We all know about the landmark cases that he has decided, particularly the family law cases in which he, he made it a point to focus on resolving the issue rather than deciding it adversarially and kept his lawyers motivated to do the same. Besides the way he used to conduct his court, the manner in, in which he would listen to the lawyers, uh, no matter whether they had the so-called face value or not, and uh, sometimes even giving clients an opportunity to speak, it, it showed what kind of person he was, and, and it was really appreciated across the bar and bench. Two cases that I would like to point out that he decided when he was a judge in the Kerala High Court and the Chief Justice of Madhya Pradesh High Court, uh, because we deal with such cases even now. Uh, when he was in Kerala High Court, he took a very wide interpretation uh, and uh, he decided to adopt a purposive interpretation while, uh, while interpreting the schedule that did not mention a disease. And so it enabled a person with, who had lost his vision during his service to get pensions. And that was followed in other cases as well. Similarly, when he was in Himachal Pradesh High Court, an issue that we face even under the current act, uh, uh, he was hearing a writ on uh, whether a person should, should have got into a person with a disability, should have come under the three person reservation or not. Uh, Justice Joseph decided to look further into the matter and uh, he reached the conclusion that there were not enough uh, number of persons with disabilities and there were unfilled seats there because either the because of non-suitability of candidates or non-availability of candidates. 
so what he held in the judgment was that you need to you know relax the criteria for them and capacity building is something that can be done even after selection so that's something that's important even for our profession if we can also throw some light on this point so over to you just as joseph thank you so much for being with us today thank you sanjita a very warm good evening to it is always warm in delhi yeah to kanjan and my good friend amar dear professors and my good friends in the fraternity and my dear students and other um, gentlemen yeah it's a wonderful evening i've been attending so many webinars uh, these days but this one i particularly enjoy in the sense you know i find lot of meaning lot of purpose lot of uh, my social obligation within me when sanjita asked me we can do something about it i was wondering what can i contribute yeah but uh, she knew what my mind is and she told me sir your presence itself is uh, good enough thank you sanjita for uh, those uh, encouragement uh, encouraging words also you spoke about me yeah in my experience uh, she spoke about couple of experiences i have a, i have several such experiences i secured an employment for a totally 100% blind lady in an establishment um, where um, uh, in, in a class for category so after some time you know some of the officials came and told me sir you have burdened us like in i said what happened see you have given a person there but what can we do with her and what can she do for us no we have not only to spare her but we have to spare somebody else also to look after her and she is doing nothing so i told this is your problem your problem is you know once there is a statutory this is not your charity this is actually your constitutional obligation you are not doing any charity while you accommodate somebody in the 3% category or you while you accommodate a lawyer or uh, accommodate uh, any person with any disability in a given situation you are not doing any charity this is our whole problem we think that we are doing an, a charity to somebody no <laughs> suppose i had a child with a disability who is 100% blind will i be doing a charity to that child while looking up to that child i take it as my responsibility and the child takes it as the child's right to get the love and affection and accommodation from the parents this is exactly our constitutional scheme our constitution does not make any difference whether you are blind you are deaf you have some uh, what do you call a uh, learning disability you have some uh, uh, orthopedic disability you have some iq problem you got some uh, that's why you know if you remember we don't we never use this word handicap now from the original concept of handicap we move towards uh, what challenged even that challenge don't is gone now now it is differently able because your ability is uh, super some of the areas where you think where you act where you work i i must say with all humility i am not be able to do that so in the in the in the scheme of creation there is no human being whom god created if you believe in god or nature permitted if you don't believe in god to be born who has no faculty who has no ability there is some ability somewhere um i can share so many videos etc which are uh, with me people a, a girl you know with uh, no born with the 
no arms at all. She's now driving. She's now she's now painting. She has she has she's I think doing PhD now. Yeah, there are so many things, you know, because uh, as the word rightly says, you know, it is a challenge. If it is a challenge, it has to be overcome as simple as it is. We shall overcome. That's the song I like most. We never give up. We have to overcome. Now, how do we overcome? We will overcome only if we ourselves, I'm speaking about my esteemed sisters and brothers who have some uh, some problem to be uh, problem to challenge. First of all, we have to change our mindset as Kanjan and uh, Amar rightly said, you know, we are not second class citizens. We are first class citizens. Our country, the, the India, my great country, my Mahan Bharat, this country says, you know, everybody is equal before law. And everybody is entitled to equal protection of law. You may be a man, you may be a woman, you may be a transgender, you may belong to one religion, you may belong to uh, uh, one region, you may speak one language, you may belong to one caste, you may belong to one tribe, makes no difference. All are Indians. What do you say in our school times in the assembly? India is my country. All Indians are my brothers and sisters. Yes, so Amar is my brother. Kandan is my sister. So every one of us, you know, we belong to one humanity. That is the beauty of uh, this constitution. And this constitution recognizes dignity. This word is very important. So India is a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. And this country guarantees justice, social, economic, and political, equality of opportunity and status, liberty of faith, belief, worship, thought, expression. Probably it starts with uh, thought and expression, thought, expression, faith, belief, worship. And then it uh, promotes fraternity, assuring the dignity of the individual. That is the beauty of my constitution, our constitution. That's the beauty of our country. So your dignity does not depend on whether you have one eye, whether you have two eyes or no eyes. It does not depend on whether you have your IQ is so quite high as a scientist, you know, or you have a low IQ. It does not, does not depend on whether you have one hand or two hands. It does not depend on whether you have one leg or two legs. It does not depend on whether you hear or you speak. It depends only on one factor, that you are a citizen of this country. It is this dignity we have to be aware of. So my dear sisters and brothers, don't think that you are living at the mercy of anybody. Don't think that you, know, you have uh, a right to get the mercy of anybody, no. You have a right to get a dignified treatment from the rest of the country. That may be your society, that may be your professional field, that may be your fellows. So the protection of dignity of uh, uh, the people, irrespective of gender, irrespective of religion, irrespective of caste, irrespective of creed, irrespective of language, irrespective of region, and irrespective of your uh, uh, your, your your physical being or intellectual capacity 
position or possession doesn't matter at all. So we should be aware of this. But the whole problem is, you know, unfortunately, those who have ears don't hear. Those who have eyes don't see. That is the problem. So how to make them hear? How to make them see? That is precisely the question before us. We call beautiful words like sensitization, etc. Kanjan referred to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court is the guardian of the constitution of India. No? It doesn't have a ramp. Orthopedically challenged the person cannot have any access. You will have to be simply lifted. He will have to be simply lifted. He or she will have to be simply lifted in a wheelchair. Suppose in crutches, it's very difficult to climb the steps. So the first place where we should start with is actually, you know, to make our Supreme Court friendly for challenged persons, visually, orthopedically, mentally, and whatnot. Let's start from there. Uh, unfortunately, I I plead. I am also responsible because I did not notice this when I was a judge there for more than five years. I thought there is some act because we judges don't go to that side. We go to a different place and go to court, come back straight. But uh, now I realize that there is no access. To when Kanjan spoke, I realized that there is no place for a, a, a ramp to go in. So accessibility in terms of physical accessibility is very important in any institution. See, if you read, you know, uh, this is a 2016 act. Under the, this is why I'm saying, you know, it's not a charity. It is the constitutional obligation, the statutory obligation. Statutory obligation is a constitutional obligation because any statute is made under the constitution. So under the 2016 act, persons, uh, the rights of a disabled persons, you know, if you remember the right, you know, that the, the, the act itself says the rights of persons with disabilities. And that uh, enactment came to give effect to the UN Convention, where, which India has ratified. And you know the key principles on which that legislation is uh, founded? First is dignity. Second is autonomy. Third is non-discrimination. Fourth is effective participation. Fifth is inclusion. And sixth is respect. So on these six principles, this act has come into it. Whether those principles are respected by those people who should respect is the question before us. And that's why I must refer to section 12, since it is better that we understand the legal uh, perspective also. That uh, section starts with the title Access to Justice. The appropriate government shall ensure that persons with disabilities are able to exercise the right to access any court. Necessarily, it is Supreme Court. That's why I said you know, it should start with Supreme Court down to the level of uh, the court of civil judge junior division, all high courts, all district courts, all senior division courts, all junior division courts, all tribunals, all commissions, wherever you know, you have um, a people to go and seek justice. And wherever, since we are speaking about lawyers, and wherever the lawyers are permitted to appear for uh, the people, they should have a friendly access in the sense, you know, there should be, uh, the navigation should be in such a way, there should be a provision for navigation. That is a part of our constitutional obligation to respect their dignity. As otherwise, we won't be respecting the dignity. That's why I said it's not a charity. It is the right. We call it a fundamental right. What's a fundamental right? It's so fundamental to my life and existence as a citizen. That's why it's called its own fundamental right. And if you have a right, you don't beg. If you have a right, you ask. 
if you have no right only then you ask for the mercy of somebody but if it is a matter of right you get it enforced if it is not given so that the person says the appropriate government shall ensure that persons with disabilities are able to exercise the right to access any court tribunal authority commission or any other body having judicial or quasi judicial or investigative powers which includes police stations also without discrimination on the basis of disability Does it, does does provision need any clarification? Many provisions require interpretation, but I don't think section twelve one of this uh, rights of uh, persons with disability requires any clarification. But is it implemented? Where is the compliance of this provision? So Sanjeev, I am giving you enough clue that you know after this COVID. the first the public interest litigation you should file in supreme court that is the supreme court itself should uh, make that court friendly for people with the disabilities for proper compliance of physical access to persons with disabilities and you should also ask the census the supreme court should also ask for uh, such a similar provision in all the high courts in all the uh, uh, judicial uh, 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 courts other days commissions everywhere as for a compliance there are a lot of uh, public interest litigations there we are not adding to it but we are only asking for uh, 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 rights of people who are otherwise you know, not in a position to have a proper and effective access to protect their dignity nothing else is again the question is dignity we speak so much, so much about the constitutional morality etc and constitutional morality one important aspect is this dignity so this constitution is not only of uh, butcher baker and candlestick maker it is not only of migrant workers and asha workers and safai karmcharis it is a constitution of mine and yours a constitution of and for the persons with the disabilities yeah and Thank then and then um, Uh, 12-2, 12-2. The appropriate government, that means uh, center or any government, shall take steps to put in place suitable support measures for persons with disabilities. Do we have uh, a, a toilet which is uh, friendly for persons with disabilities in such a, in such a public places like a Supreme Court? Let's start with Supreme Court again, or High Courts. or another uh, do we have a we see in airports since uh, we have been traveling so much and we are seen in airports but i have not seen a place reserved but if you travel since i'm say i'm not boasting but i've seen i've traveled abroad i've seen such provisions to protect the dignity of such people by providing suitable toilets you know which are friendly for them to use whether you have a hearing problem or you have a Visual problem, whether you have an orthopedic problem, whether you have a mental problem, you, whether you need somebody to assist you for that also. For such, all such, you know, such a spacious room with the support systems, all are provided. And you know the way they respect these people, you know, nobody else will use it also. A lot of uh, respect is given to them. So that's why I said, you know, we should have eyes to see and ears to hear. not for any compassion i say constitutional compassion is not a mercy of a judge constitutional compassion is actually the right of the person and they should get it so it is in that angle i am uh, making this uh, observations and uh, support measures for persons with disabilities especially those living outside family and those disabled requiring high support for exercising legal rights so what is this high support high support is one thing which i said and the scanjan said you know at least a a a, a, a what you call a, a place where you know, people won't excuse uh, unfortunately in an slp the admission day in supreme court is very difficult for ladies to get into a court and then argue a case but at least you know we should have some sort of a reservation for some chair 
at least one chair each in a court where such a person comes that person should have that chair in the front if is such a person is not there of course it can be occupied by anybody else but we should have a reserved chair for persons with the lawyers with a disability if coming to court to occupy a, a respectable place in front in front of the court because you know lawyer has to communicate with the judge and of course the sensitization of the judges is very important there will be see no doubt about it but suppose uh, they have a child of a same problem and who is a lawyer then they will understand it is where this parent patria concept comes in all are my children the for the court all are their children because court is the guardian of such people if you go to cpc also you know see it is actually all the premises framers of this constitution the laws have taken care of this concepts but at the implementation level we are very poor we are deaf we are blind in implementation so we should open their eyes we should open their ears in the matter of uh, implementation to protect the dignity not to get uh, some charity for the no to protect the dignity of our uh, brothers and sisters treating them as my own brothers and sisters because india is my country all indians are my brothers and sisters that's the root concept we should have then all this caste creed ability gender everything will go this is where we should uh, uh, teach our children to respect others as brother and sister then you will know who is your mother you will know who is your sister then you will know who is your brother unfortunately we don't teach them this we only teach them how to consume faster how to consume better from this consumeristic culture we should get rid of uh, our children youngsters teaching them to you know to respect the dignity of others the individuality and uh, the dignity of other person be it a girl be it a transgender be it a boy be it a child be it uh, who, who ever been uh, disabled or whatever it is yes and uh, these categories are entitled to get additional respect this is where i want to conclude and again i said it's not a charity why do we have special provisions for women because they are entitled to get higher respect why do we have special provisions for disabled persons because they are entitled to get a higher respect so that is how we have to tackle these issues we have to approach these people we have to we have to get these uh, things protected and implemented also i don't want to continue this i have lot more to say but uh, i'm saying the sensitization of uh, those in power is very important they should open their ears and they should open their eyes in that establishment which i started with i told them see there are a lot of things which a person with the, who is 100% blind can do only thing is that you, know, you should train that person of the things that they can do it's your problem that you did not train had you trained that uh, uh, lady to do the things which she could she would have uh, done wonders in your establishment it re- hardly required a trainer to be brought to that establishment and given them maybe you know two weeks three weeks four weeks training marvelous works that lady would have done they don't do that instead of the curse the one who supported for the employment every day you have given a nuisance to your institution you have wasted the manpower of somebody else also not only really one person is getting salary without any employment another person also is uh, given to support that person is our mindset that's a problem if you could simply train that blind lady to do some work respectable work in an establishment she would have trained and done it better with a far better commitment than anybody else that you don't do that is your statutory obligation 
without doing that you 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 continue cursing the one who inducted her there the continue cursing as if you know this is a, a big burden given to them it's not a burden it's actually your obligation thank you i i i can't stop uh, i know when i speak these things uh, i don't stop but i have to stop it since uh, uh, time is running out thank you all the best and god bless you jai hind i wish you all the best and uh, i i i pledge my solidarity and uh, assure you of my all support for any such cause you take thank you sir thank you so much so just wanted to add that uh, there is an elevator in the supreme court that that's just next to the canteen and takes you to near court number 4 so there is an elevator but the point is wherever there's a staircase there has to be a ramp that's not really there and uh, to make that point uh, when javed abidi sahab was contesting a case in supreme court he made it a point to take the stairs every day on the wheelchair so that all the lawyers could see and even uh, people like uh, minakshi arora ma'am they remember that uh, later on jaitley sahab also would say that they still remember how he made that point just to to you know remind people that this is missing also I, i mean just because it came up the the heavyweight curtains near the door the, they don't really work for anybody <laughs> so uh, i guess uh, we now can close it with the closing remarks of uh, dr professor chaudhary after that we can take the questions so professor chaudhary he is the vice chancellor of uh, apg university shimla and he is the former pro vice chancellor of uh, sage university indore he is a professor in computer sciences and engineering he is a specialist in artificial intelligence in case we need some ai support from him over to you professor chaudhary i am professor ramesh chaudhary i forgot to uh, address you namaskar eh? thank you sanjita uh, it's a place broad privilege for me and for my university epigwell simla university to greet justice kurian joseph advocate mr amar jain advocate ms kanchan and sanjita as a moderator it was a wonderful program because of this covid 19 we are also doing every day webinar and uh, i am thankful to the law school to collaborate with the epigwell simla university the school of law and legal studies uh, is a law school at the epigwell simla university and i am happy a lot of students have joined a lot of uh, uh, i mean to say advocates have joined and uh, i will like to compliment uh, honorable justice once we have announced that we are going to collaborate i tell you you have a deep relationship with himachal pradesh and people still remember you and uh, everybody has a what's a wonderful uh, man not as a justice not because of the you were the chief justice at himachal people have a very sweet memory and everybody was quite happy that you are coming on the webinar in a collaboration with law school so i i am really and once i listen you it was wonderful and every every speaker has contributed and i i tell you that uh, really in india it is required to uh, more sensitize about the disability i i tell you uh, justice kurian has uh, uh, already shared the difference uh, between the other countries and india especially europe and us once we talk and i have a real experience when i was a bodywork in uk and i was standing at the bus stand and then i saw that bus has been stopped and driver is get down from the bus i didn't understand why it has happened and because uh, some physically challenged or uh, uh, people was there and driver get down and then driver driver enable him to uh, get in the bus himself and then make him comfortable once you will travel abroad you will see that kind of respect basically this respects come from the heart nothing like that they have been nurtured and that is remarking but of course uh, 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 we in india is also things are progressing and uh, once once we will do such webinar definitely it will create a 
uh, sensitivity about the uh, and I'm, I'm very surprised that uh, a guardian of the law uh, the, uh, the Supreme Court and guardian of the constitutions and then there is some problem and then the ones, uh, uh, there is some challenges uh, uh, lawyering with the disabilities and it's a matter of concern but I'm very optimistic and uh, uh, hopefully uh, this webinar will lead a and a lot of people have joined on the YouTube. Very large number of the uh, it, it is, webinar is a live, and uh, people are listening. Uh, and then I will like to exchange the belly uh, very fun, but today Simula is very cold. It was a heavy rain. It's a wonderful weather here. So uh, I, I would like to again uh, extend our warm greetings and look forward to and it was really, really, really very, very good uh, uh, kind of contributions. And uh, you will be very happy to see because everywhere Simla University have the students from 28 countries. A lot of international uh, students uh, from different countries have joined and they are listening to you. And uh, uh, we will keep the uh, webinar has been organized and thankful to the law school, Ramanujam uh, Mukherjee, to give us an opportunity and we look forward uh, for it. As a computing guy, once you have said, yeah, yes, but uh, uh, this uh, computing technology, especially advanced uh, computing and artificial intelligence has worked a lot of, and then people I have seen in the chat box also, people are appreciating that really, uh, to some extent, the technology and gadget has had made the life easier uh, to the uh, this, uh, disabled people. And the the most <laughs> which I have remarked with the justice that it's not a that you are doing charity. It's our responsibility as a society uh, to enable them and to make them feel comfortable and to them equal up. So thank you again, and uh, uh, thank you to all uh, School of Law and Legal Studies of the APQL Simla University for participating in a uh, good number. So wish you have a nice evening. Thank you, sir. Simla and Himachal is remembering you a lot. I had a conversation with so many people and they were saying wonderful man, wonderful justice you were, uh, the Himachal has seen. Thank you. Thank you, Jawadar Sir. Thank you, Sanjita. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Chaudhary. I would just uh, like to read out some comments from chat box. Uh, this is for Kanchan Ma'am. Respected Ma'am, your grit, determination, perseverance, consistency towards the legal profession is commendable. Ritu, from, she's an assistant professor of law at APG University, Shimla. Kanchan Ma'am, Bhavana says, uh, Kanchan Ma'am, you reach your goal with sheer determination. Hats off to you. Kanchan Ma'am, yes. I've been hearing uh, the talk of uh, charity, it's not charity, etc. Uh, I'm grateful that it's not charity. I'm just not grateful that there is hindrance and obstruction. Um, I'm not expecting charity. I'm not ex expecting relaxation. I'm not expecting any, any, any adjustments beyond the fact that what is required by law. But the amount of obstruction and destruction and uh, the wrongs that happen in the name of not doing charity or doing charity. So some are so good that they over charitize. Okay. So this word on cha of charity, I do not expect that. I'm ex expecting equality before the law. I only go by Article 14. But unfortunately, I'd say the courts, um, there, is a, uh, there is a PIL already pending for the last 10 years in the uh, Supreme Court about the accessibility of places, including the Supreme Court itself. There is uh, there are a couple of other cases pending regarding the accessibility of documents. We don't follow those as well. And Amar and I cannot function if the documents are not properly done up. They're not properly entered in. I'm hoping that the new systems in place after COVID 
will incorporate all those but i'm specifically referring to the the judgment in surendra mohan given by the supreme court of india saying that lawyers cannot read they cannot write they will not be able to ascertain they have no faculties i'm a little disappointed if in 2019 18 and 19 if that is what the supreme court still thinks of me then i haven't done any work for the last 25 years or not achieved anything so i'd like the supreme court to then think about it again you're not giving me charity you're not even letting me do my work in peace if i want to be a judge i i really don't want to be personally but if i had to want to be a judge then why does somebody say i cannot be a judge and i cannot do what is supposed to be done can i not control a courtroom of course i can control a courtroom i think i can pick up sounds better than anybody else can i not understand the rules of course i can read them there are manuals for me to read and the manuals are now accessible and they are available online so i'd like to only ask the honorable justice what was happening when surinder mohan's case was decided uh is sunjata you can pass on the judgment uh, right now to refresh just as uh, memory maybe i think can, he can had can then you want me to respond to that now straight away i can respond to that yeah yeah can then i want to say you know the supreme court was considering whether somebody was uh, surinder mohan somebody was uh, what do you call a fit enough to be appointed as a civil judge junior judge so what was in the mind of the court i am just reading the mind of the court was that you know when you take evidence can you see the body language of the witness and then appreciate the evidence that was one aspect which went through and of course you know the something which uh, uh, amar uh, mentioned about the accessibility to the documents since the technology is not updated but for your information i had a good friend uh, who is 100% blind but who, who became a judge in the supreme court of south africa he used to come many times to india also we have i'm sure uh, many of you of uh, listen to him mohammed uh, um, uh, does anybody remember his name full name i used to call him mohammed sab yes Yeah, yeah. He used to just carry his uh, simple instrument, and you know, he is a judge of the Supreme Court quite long now. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Therefore, therefore uh, Kanjan, the yes, Supreme sir. Court did not say that you know lawyers are not uh, lawyers with the disability or uh, visual disability disability are not uh, fit to be appointed as judges in the High Court and Supreme Court. They, they only they only said you know for a civil judge junior division when you conduct a trial. probably then i have uh, uh, a little difficulty because you will not be able to uh, what do you call uh, assess the body language of the witness that's why i said you know the nature of the jobs to be performed by the holder of the post whereas uh, for a high court judge there is no such problem for a supreme court judge, there is no problem so i wish you know they take uh, somebody to those positions do not a civil judge junior judge sir so how do we repair the damage done it's a big damage we've lost the review petition as well how do we repair the damage i have to rectify this if the last thing i do for my my people that's the one judgment i have to set aside so please help i don't know what to go for a curative petition to go to a bigger bench i don't know what to do with that judgment i have to get rid of it that review is pending now no review is gone dismissed so. review is dismissed then you are only the curative yeah <laughs> yes uh, that's a big one for us so. no that is one curative and second there's a third method you know so third method is you know you can uh, take him in the, the the what you call the, the root of the judgment by an appropriate legislation that's not the end of the world a judgment of the supreme court is not the end of the world you can have an appropriate legislation in place <laughs> Right. So, uh, Kanchan, we I think uh, Justice Joseph has answered it to the best of of you know. Uh, I mean, you can't really expect him to go beyond this. And we, of course, give it a fight. We'll give curative petition a fight. We'll fight for a legislation. Uh, and he's right about the fact that it wasn't meant for High Court or Supreme Court. So you have to look into the facts of the case and decide accordingly. so uh, i'm just opening it for further questions from the audience if you have any question you can 
either write in the chat box or you can give us any indication like reactions, yes, raise hand. We will unmute you then and you can ask your questions to the speaker. Sa Sa Sanjita, you can tell the audience that we have a beautiful interpreter, Nataraja. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, I, you know, those people who are able, not able to hear also, they, they can ask questions, he will interpret it and give. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Uh, there's a question here. Why not go live stream or online with all procedures in Supreme Court, especially in case of disabled? This is Anuj Gupta, Assistant Professor of APJ I think that there is already a case pending in Supreme Court and they have passed some orders that you know, they are not our street, but only the technology has to be in place. I think slowly it is coming up. Right. And now they are bought, they are compelled to have it also because you know, since it is a virtual court, it is virtual everywhere. You can it's not something restricted between the, the judge and the lawyer and the clients. You know, it's, it's in the virtual world. Right, sir. So I guess that is it. I don't see any other questions here. There are many comments here that we have already gone through. Mostly they are appreciating you all and this session. Uh, there's also an issue about uh, Muruganathan has been pointing out the issue with, that you cannot read it even with the OCR, the court documents that has already been discussed. This issue has already been discussed here by Amar. And uh, he also talks about Puttuswami and, and how international law has to be construed as part of domestic law in absence of legislation. We already have a, a very good disability law at the moment at the national level. It's just time for its interpretation. It's it's time for its implementation, I guess, to all ways possible. So uh, I think we can conclude the session here unless anybody has to say anything. Sajita, there's a question about software. Uh, I'll start yes. with it and I'm going to con conclude that because I'll just start with the basic software that I use. And sure. because I and Amar, of course, uses much more advanced. Uh, I use uh, an iPhone and um, it has a software, uh, an app called VoiceOver, which is inbuilt in the iPhone. It reads me my emails. It reads me my messages, my WhatsApp. It reads me all my documents that I need. Um, recently, I, I have started That's converting my uh, email. I'm sorry, my images into uh, text, which is through Voice Dream Reader, another app. Uh, on my computer, I use something called NVDA. I used to use a paid soft, uh, software called JAWS. Now I use an open source NVDA. It reads me everything I need. It, I can work with uh, uh, Excel, PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, the internet, um, and uh, my emails, of course. Uh, what I cannot do in de great detail is, of course, the internet because I'm not great at it and I'm going to tell you more about that. But other than that, most of my work I can do myself. There is Dragon software for dictation, which a lot of other lawyers, non-disabled lawyers use, but I prefer typing it out. It's an ordinary keyboard. I use an ordinary uh, laptop and an ordinary iPhone. It's not something different. But luckily for us, the iPhone starts appearing, uh, starts talking as soon as you can. You buy it from the shop. You don't need to do anything much to it. You don't need any help and assistance in that. And as work-wise, I do all my work myself. I do not like printing, so I leave it to others to print. And Amar can tell you the rest of the software that he uses. Uh, so uh, just taking over, Anjan ma'am, thanks. So basically, if you see today, whatever is machine readable is in our control. So for example, you have Kanchan ma'am already spoke about the screen reader like JAWS voiceover that allow that facilitates. So what gets displayed on screen gets read out. Uh, for scanned documents and for printed documents, somebody mentioned that you know you were not able to OCR them. I think it's it's a work in progress. Artificial intelligence has improved a lot. Uh, you can definitely use various softwares. For example, Fine Reader is one such software. Uh, which you can use. Uh, uh, you have Envision AI, which is a very good software. So even 
artificial intelligence is now reaching to a stage where even handwritten text uh, is possible to be read out uh yes it is definitely difficult when you get handwritten comments and all it's 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 right now not doable but otherwise uh, there are many softwares in terms of artificial intelligence and otherwise which can help you do the uh, the even the tasks like due diligence and all which i mentioned earlier thank you amar so manika can you please unmute the participants one by one who have to ask questions So, uh, Ishita Nigi, you raise your hand. We are unmuting you. Uh, please go ahead with your question. Yeah. Hi, Samanika. I am not being able to unmute her. You can just go, uh, move on to another person. Okay. Uh, Rajesh sir, you have also raised your hand. Please go ahead. Uh, Bhavna, can you unmute Rajesh sir? Yeah. Just a second. He's Being yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Unmute. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, Amar sir, would you kindly tell us something about the drafting softwares which you use for writing? Sure, sir. So for drafting, uh, as you, I mean, commonly we use, of course, MS Word remains to be the main sort of uh, tool which we use for drafting and formatting. Then there are specialized plugins, and these these are not specifically meant for people with disability, but there are uh, plugins which you know, like Grammarly, you have Letera, you have other sorts of plugin providers. Help you for table of content, clause referencing. All of those sorts of things, but otherwise, your main tool remains as the uh, MS Word. Okay, thank you, sir. So, can sir. we have a list of the software, sir, by some way? Sure, sir. If you could just email me, my email address is pretty simple: amarjain at amarjain dot com. If right, you could sir. email me, I'd be more than happy to help you. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. I Hi, use Kamsa. Dragon Professional. Am I on? I use uh, Dragon Professional version fifteen. Uh, yeah. That Uh, you can just train it and use it. Uh, you can type as fast as you speak. It types for you. Yeah, yeah. Next Thank is you. Thank you. Five plus, but you haven't connected your audio. Kindly connect your audio so that we can unmute you and you can ask your question. Uh, next is uh, AB five. Your device name is coming. Your name is not coming. Please go ahead. Please raise your hand. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. uh this was just in response some information which seemed to have slipped some information which seemed to have slipped the people that uh, my name is incidentally vikram dat and i had a junior colleague whom i had recruited as principal of a college as an assistant professor in law and he appeared for the delhi judicial service and failed medically because he is bipolar so the matter went to the high court of delhi and about 10 days ago the high court has ruled in his favor so this is a very big movement forward kanchan i don't know if you are aware of this case no, no bhavya nayan no. yeah it's bhavya nayan versus the state bhavya nayan i have I put will. it into yeah thank you sir this is, this is a very big breakthrough thank you vikram vikram what was the disability vikram he is sir bipolar your lordship bipolar okay okay bipolar ha huh? and it was a db in the high court i think chief justice and uh, one more uh, the other person has been an old student from uh, my school and they ruled that bipolar cannot be cured so the lower court had held that bipolar is a treatable disease yeah, and exactly. therefore i wanted i wanted to say that yeah. bipolar so the high, is something which can be it is like it, diabetic yes it's it like can be your it, it can be no controlled and managed it can it can be managed it cannot be cured so yeah. that is what the high court said and upheld his selection under the disability quota that's what i said you no know, diabetic diabetic absolutely it's a, it's a high profile disease so people just start so bipolar uh -huh. is not a high profile disease there's a problem yeah and there is a lot of uh, Sir, uh, Professor Nimish Desai and I were involved in the drafting of the mental illness bill. So there are a lot of people who are not yet aware of the understanding of mental illness. Though in the revised uh, Disability Act, mental illness has been included as one of the 19. In the previous act, only four were included. So things are moving. Yeah, yeah, it should move. It should be because the mindset should change. That's the only thing. Yeah. 
in fact uh, somebody who sanchita and i both know very closely is a former law minister about 20 years ago a class fellow who was then manager ibm we approached him maybe 25 years ago that uh, you know it's time you start uh, computerizing the supreme court and we were laughed at he said yaar you are a friend so i can't do anything more than laugh <laughs> sanchita you and i will know who we are talking about next time we'll have a coffee of him on his remarks 25 years ago thank you professor dat we know the the effort he made as a law minister to make court paperless as well oh yes so, of course uh, so that is where we have moved it's great that 25 years ago people didn't understand it today we are saying can we have a blind judge and why not we had a blind attorney general in west bengal absolutely adan gupta yeah. we have a blind supreme court i think it's called the federal court in germany so the time has come for india too thank you so much thank you so much professor dat for your valuable comments uh, samanika can we please unmute uh, i think ritu panta she's galaxy a20 she has a question if you can unmute her <laughs> Uh, good evening to uh, all of you present here as ma'am has already introduced uh, me i am assistant professor and working in apg university shimla i think my question uh, would be to uh, uh, honorable justice kurian sir uh, i uh, listen to your valuable words and time and again you have talked about the sensitivity drives that we need to conduct i have a suggestion to make uh, i don't know whether it's appropriate hello can hello. You- Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Hello. Sir, uh, I have a suggestion to make. It's just a suggestion that uh, could we incorporate the sensitivity drives towards the disabled people as part of our professional ethics? Because uh, that will actually uh, suffice the purpose. Because just uh, talking about sensitivity drives and all these things towards the disabled people, I think we need to draw sort of a harmony between the disabled people and the people who are not suffering from disability. So yeah, mama. Is- yeah, mama. I agree with you. If you if you if you closely analyze our fundamental duty, I, you can see that also. No? Uh, that I agree with you. And in the process, you know, it should start from it should start from the 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 advocates act, the regulations, and make we should make our law college also friendly. How many law colleges in the country are friendly for this uh, disabled the people? We we saw we we spoke about Supreme Court, High Courts, etc. but our students how do students go there so i think we should start from that stage onwards you know the, the educational institution should be made friendly for them law and you know below that also but since we are speaking about law colleges a uh, law only you know i am saying you know all the law colleges in the country should have a, a friendly uh, accessible infrastructural facility there for the uh, challenged people Sir, if I may add there, uh, IDIA uh, under the guidance of Shamna Doshi had been trying to do this. They have a national vertical for uh, disabled. Yeah. Where they have been struggling with the national law universities and other uh, law colleges to develop such kind of process and a system where the co- universities are uh, like universities do provide such uh, facilities to the students. But the struggle is just the same. Samanika, Samanika, only Danda. Only Danda. This country, whole problem with our country is now only Danda will <laughs> will do anything. So this Danda from Supreme Court or the respective High Court in the state of which you are speaking probably will do something. Yes, sir. So uh, due to the positive time, let's, uh, ma'am, if you may uh, permit, we'll take only two more questions. Yeah, I think so. We have to. This time is out. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Murugan Natham, uh, we are unmuting you. Please go ahead. Actually, I have a question. Actually, it's a form of a simple discussion. Please go ahead, sir. I think there's some bandwidth error at your end. We, uh, you are not audible. I think you can type your comments, uh, sir. We'll read it out. All of us can read uh, it out in the section. Uh, maybe you unmute the next. Yes, uh, 
Murugannatham, Murugannatham, there is some problem with your technology, what to do. It's not your problem with your faculties, but the problem is with the technology. That so, is. just type out your question, Sanjita will take care of. I think you can give the last question somebody is asking. Yes, uh, Natasha Pinto, you've raised your hand. We've unmuted you. Please go ahead. I don't think they are willing to ask. I think we've already covered the questions then. Great. No problem. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you to all the speakers. Thank you, Justice Joseph, Ms. Pan Kanchan Pamnani, and, and Mr. Jain, Professor Chaudhary. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being thanks, there. Thanks, thank you, all the participants, for being so wonderful and for participating in the discussion. Thank you, Nataraja, for being so useful and so effective today. Thank you so much. And let me also thank you, the organizers, you know, for having thought of a thoughtful, eh, very meaningful uh, program. Because we always thought of so many others, but we never thought of this uh, particular group. It has been very meaningful, very thoughtful. It's very nice and kind of you to have done this. Thank you all very much. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay blessed. God bless you. And Jai Hind. Thank you, everyone. From On behalf of Law Seeker, we are ending the meeting. Stay safe. Thank you.